Cree's latest XHP 70.2 emitter is very bright. I mean, believe me, a lot of people are saying it. The Storm of Raw review yesterday proved it with its 6,000 lumens. Ace Beam now is using it too and putting it in tiny soda can sized lights and says, we don't need no active coolant, also wear gloves was. The Ace Beam K30 is pretty small, not smaller than an octagon meteor, but it is thinner and mostly because it uses a traditional smooth reflector. Let's see, uh, got a glass lens, attack ready crenellated bezel, smooth reflect, oh, I already said that, uh, an integrated battery carrier, which is nice, although I prefer the grooved slots because high lumen flashlights can always use more aluminum. Okay, so it comes with a box, manual, warranty cards, the light, a nice clickable lanyard for those dudes into those and a holster if you're one of those people that accessorize everything and like to carry everything on your belt. Nope, not a gun, ma'am, or, or a can of mace. It's, it's just a flashlight. It's got strobe, though. Oh, I know, I don't have room to talk. I'm the one making the reviews. It's waterproof to 10 meters. I mean, I'd stick with shallow submersions personally. You know, the usual. The knurling is kind of flat, but it does add a bit of texture, you know, depending on how much blood you have on your hands already. Output levels, it's got a bunch. My estimated lumens, values, and ace beams. First, up Firefly. I'd like something a little lower. Maybe like half a lumen. Low. I'd also like something a little lower. Maybe in the 30 to 70 range. Mid, that's fine with me. High. Turbo, notice the manufacturer rated step down from 2,500 lumens to 2,000 for whatever reason. And then there's Turbo Max, also stepping down. Actually, if you do the math, it's almost like it's half-stepping. You're like, man, that ain't no half-stepping. Yeah, you're, you're right, my math's off. Um, the UI. The UI is pretty much like all the single-button ace beams I reviewed recently, like the X45, the X80. Put the batteries in, screw on the battery tube. All batteries face the same way. I want to say they're in series, not parallel, despite looking parallel because of the voltage and, uh, yeah. It cannot be mechanically locked out, just electronically. Press and hold for over two seconds, it blinks, it's locked out. Press and hold for over two seconds to unlock out or reverse lock out or the opposite of lock out. Okay, batteries are in, regular operation. Click once to turn it on. Then press and hold to go through the main modes, low, mid, high, low, mid, high. Only these three are saved into mode memory and none of the other turbo, firefly, or strobes are. Press once to turn it off. Okay, all other modes are shortcut based. Let's do those now. Press and hold for under two seconds and release to access firefly from any time. Firefly is never saved into mode memory. Triple click from any time gets you to strobe hard. Not saved into mode memory, of course. Off, then double click from any time to get you turboed hard. And to get to turbo max, you need to be in regular turbo. Then do a timed double click. Click, it goes black, click again quickly. So it's press black, press. See how that works? It's like a, not a quick double click, like a slow double click. Click, space, click. All right. Run times, flat tops, button tops, both work. Flat tops fit a little loose, so maybe use a button top. I use 3100 milliamp hour ace beam batteries. The ones included with the X80. I read speculation that these are Sony VTC6s, but I have not removed the wrapper to check it. I recommend high drains. It is not clear if those batteries I used had protection built in. I'm pretty sure they do. Ending voltage on all these tests was 2.6-ish to 2.8-ish voltages-ish. First up, Turbo Max. Brightness drops quick from 30 seconds in to 1 minutes in. We've dropped 25%. That's 5,200 lumens to 3,900 lumens. Two minutes in, we get that hard drop to about 2,100 lumens or 58%-ish overall drop. Double check my math if you also have no life. About an hour in, we haven't dropped much more. Still over 2,000 lumens. Two hours in, we've only dropped a few more lumens. Two hours and six minutes in, it shuts off. Now, if I were a bet man, I'd say the next mode, turbo, only lasts a few minutes longer. So let's find out, homies. Turbo. Two minutes in, we've only lost 2%. 30 minutes in, we've only lost 5% overall in brightness. And hours in, we're almost at a 6% loss in brightness. At two hours in, as you start wondering what it all means, and that we've only lost not even 7% of overall brightness, and maybe you're just wasting your damn time watching all this crap. And when it cuts off at almost the exact same time as Turbo, you're like, why not just have Turbo Max only? 
and all I can say is I warned you. And I tried to help you all I can, but I got nothing for you, man. We're all friends here, right? We don't mind hearing the same joke over and over again, so let's get high. Ten minutes in, we've lost two-ish percent brightness. Cool. One hour's in, we've lost like two and a half percent of tedious, irritating brightness. Three hours in, we're still about the same. Less than three percent overall. And when it cuts off at three hours and 35 minutes, we've lost just over three percent of brightness and so far about six minutes of your time. Beam shots, fools. Here we're using some soda can lights. I actually prefer beer can size lights, but you know that. Look, the BLF Q8, review coming soon. All these have maximum brightness modes from 4,000 to 9,000 lumens, and I've reviewed them all, so watch them. First, the Ace Beam K30. There's an important distinction here. This is the only single emitter light. 5,000 lumens out of one LED. I don't exactly know what that means in the scheme of things, but there's still a lot I'm trying to figure out. And someone's like, magnets? Yeah, how do they work? Now the Manker MK34. This light steps down incredibly fast, like at 30 seconds in. But it sure has a nice tint, nicer than all the other lights here. So, tint only, that's the coolest one. I mean, not coolest. It's kind of warmish. The K30 has a tint shift across the beam. Coolish in the center, slight hint of greenish in the corona, and bluish at the edges. The light is supposedly rated at 6000K. It's a cool tint and probably won't do anything to win over the people who've complained about Ace Beam's tints on their XHP centered lights. Now the Q8, best UI in the whole bunch. Nice neutralish tint with a hint of tint shift near the edges. These tint shifts aren't really perceptible outdoors during actual use. Comparing several big lumen lights on your apartment wall, well, your experience is gonna vary if you do it that way. K30 for a few seconds more. How about the Meteor? This light is currently on loan to Adventure Sport Flashlight's YouTube channel. Remember, remember him, right? For flashlight porn, I guess, which is, you know, different than porn with flashlights. Big distinction. It's a nice tint and brighter by a couple thousand lumens over the K30. Shorter, but wider. No comment there. Um, Olight X7, the brightest light here. And uh, now my brother is the proud owner. Gave it to him for his birthday. The X7R will now replace it in my videos since it's brighter. I had some notes recently that I could talk less during these sections, but I figured some small pointless stories are just as good as not talking, right? Wrapping it up, it's small and 15 minutes in it was about 128 Fahrenheit near the head. When you're using it on turbo, the end of the battery tube is closer to 100 degrees. So if you're a tough bro, you may not need gloves. No judgment if you do though. It's nowhere near the 150-ish degrees of the X80. Then I let it run for about 25 minutes before shutting it off. Last check temp was about 35, 135 Fahrenheit near the head. Turbo modes are best used in cooler weather or in bursts. It's a good outdoors and indoors light with a little bit of throw when you need it. I don't know what you look for in lights, but I prefer easy user interfaces and good tints. Objectively, the Q8 is the best here at that. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. Although the Meteor is probably my favorite because it's the coolest looking. I think it's probably a bad reason to like a flashlight. Manker has the best tint, but the UI is not my favorite there. I don't know. Just stuff to think about. You may look for different things in flashlights, and that's fine. Ace Beam provided this light for review. If you like this review, subscribe, like, comment, look for my Q8 review in a few weeks, and a few other things, some knives, and I don't know, whatever. Thanks for watching.